What does it truly mean when the most powerful forces in our solar system collide with something that should not even exist here? How much can we trust the categories we place on cosmic wanderers when time and again one object continues to defy them all? If a solar storm, born from the furnace of our star, has just unleashed its fury against a visitor from beyond, are we merely observing a natural encounter, or could we be staring directly at a moment of design? For weeks, astronomers had been tracking the course of the mysterious object, catalogued as 3I Atlas, an interstellar traveller whose behaviour had already confounded expectations. Unlike the rocky interstellar object Oumuamua, whose passage through our system was brief and puzzling, 3I Atlas carried with it not just a tail, but strange structural anomalies that made experts hesitate before calling it a comet at all. Its coma shone strangely, its trajectory bent in ways difficult to fully explain with conventional models, and its so-called anti-tail suggested something heavy and deliberate pushing against the solar wind instead of flowing with it. Then came the solar storm. The sun, unpredictable and ferocious in its magnetic moods, had released what scientists call a coronal mass ejection a monstrous eruption in which millions of tons of plasma threaded with magnetic fields are hurled into the solar system. To say it carries the force of a billion nuclear detonations is not exaggeration, but understatement. The Parker Solar Probe, humanity's fragile sentinel that has skimmed nearer to the sun than any other machine, has recorded these Leviathan events firsthand. It survived only because of extraordinary shielding and because the storm, while massive, was spread over a wide arc of space. But survival is not always guaranteed, even for human-made instruments. Now imagine such a storm slamming into something without magnetic shielding, without an atmosphere, without any form of protection at all. A comet, if 3I Atlas were truly a comet, should be stripped of its gaseous tail, possibly fractured, and at the very least visual transformed in a way that our telescopes could easily register. It should, in theory, bear the scars of such an encounter. But 3 I Atlas is no ordinary wanderer, and astronomers are waiting with nervous anticipation to see whether it reacts as one would expect. The Carrington event of the 19th century remains the most devastating reminder of what happens when solar storms reach Earth itself. Telegraph wires burst into flames, systems collapsed, and for a brief moment civilization trembled. Yet in that century there were only wires to burn. If an event of that magnitude, or worse, were to strike our world today, Global communication systems, satellites, and entire power grids would be annihilated in seconds. Life as we know it would grind to a halt, our dependence on electronics leaving us utterly exposed. And that was from a single storm aimed at Earth. 3I Atlas, at its current distance, has just been struck by one of these cosmic blasts directly in open interstellar space. What, then, should happen? History offers a few clues. Comets have been hit by solar storms before, and their tails have sometimes been violently disrupted, shredded and blown aside as though caught in a galactic hurricane. Some have flared brighter, their icy cores suddenly venting in response to the plasma bombardment. A few have even fragmented. Yet none of those were interstellar, and none carried the same peculiarities that 3I Atlas has displayed. Among those peculiarities is the anti-tail, an extension of material that appears to move against the flow of solar wind. Such a feature is uncommon enough when attached to familiar comets, but in 3I Atlas the phenomenon has persisted with remarkable stability, resisting disruptions that should have dispersed it. Scientists expected the solar megastorm to obliterate it in a matter of moments. 
If the anti-tale remains afterward, the questions surrounding this traveller will grow darker still. For now, speculation swirls. Could a civilization, one vastly beyond our own, have engineered such resilience? Could the so-called comet be a vessel, sheathed in layers of technology that mimic natural processes just enough to deceive a casual glance? If the solar storm was survivable for Parker thanks to design, what would it mean if Three Eye Atlas survived because of something more deliberate? And what if the storm itself was not an accident of timing at all? To understand the scale of what has just unfolded, one must appreciate the sun itself, a star whose turbulent heart gives birth to these tempests. Deep beneath its blazing surface, magnetic ropes twist and writhe, tangling until they snap in sudden violence. When they do, plasma is hurled outward. Electrons and protons accelerated to near-light speeds, carrying the sun's fury across millions of kilometers. On average, one such storm may eject billions of tons of matter, with an energy release equivalent to untold trillions of Hiroshima bombs. It is not an exaggeration to say that each one is a weapon of the cosmos, indiscriminate and unstoppable. Three Eye Atlas was in its path. It was never a matter of whether it would be struck, but what would happen when it was. And here is where the mystery deepens. By all accounts, the chances of an interstellar object, of which only a handful have ever been detected, being caught in the crosshairs of a solar storm during its brief passage through our system, are astonishingly small. One might call it coincidence, yet the improbabilities keep stacking higher with Three Eye Atlas, its trajectory, its anti tail, its composition, and now this encounter. Too many coincidences begin to resemble intention, and intention raises troubling possibilities. Could a storm be triggered not by nature, but by an intervention we do not yet understand? Could a civilization manipulate the sun itself, coaxing it into eruption at a moment most opportune? The notion feels outrageous, yet scientists have long mused about ways high-energy inputs might influence stellar plasma. Hypothetically, injecting a burst of matter or energy into the solar corona could tip unstable regions into eruption. For humans, such technology lies far beyond our reach. For someone else, perhaps not. If Three Eye Atlas survived, and early signals suggest it may have endured better than it had any right to, the implications are staggering. We may be witnessing a test, a maneuver, a harvesting event. For plasma carries not only destructive potential but unimaginable power. Advanced concepts in theoretical propulsion have explored the use of magnetic sails, vast structures designed to capture the energy of solar storms, converting chaos into thrust or stored energy. If Three Eye Atlas is wrapped not in ice but in machines, then what just happened could have been less disaster, more recharge. The hours after the impact stretched into an uneasy silence. Observatories across Earth and orbital telescopes alike were tuned to the faint silhouette of the interstellar visitor. The expectation was simple. Disruption. Astronomers believed the plasma wave should shear off its glowing trail, scatter volatile ices into space, and leave the comet-like body gasping in the dark. Yet reports trickling out hinted at something far stranger. The tail did not vanish in the way models predicted. The anti-tail, that enigmatic structure that had already resisted the normal solar wind, appeared largely intact. And more than that, early spectral data suggested the body itself remained untouched as if the coronal mass ejection had passed it by like a wave breaking against stone. If true, this was no ordinary comet. 
The power of the solar storm is not something that can be overstated. Imagine a nuclear arsenal beyond comprehension, detonated all at once, then multiplied again and again. Plasma races outward at speeds exceeding a million miles per hour, over one and a half million kilometers per hour, carrying with it magnetic fields capable of tearing through unprotected electronics. Even hardened satellites tremble under such bombardments. For an icy fragment drifting through space to withstand that without a visible mark, the odds shrink to nearly nothing. And yet here Three Eye Atlas drifts, continuing on its path, enigmatic as ever. This survival raised a darker thought. What if the storm was not simply endured, but used? Theoretical astrophysics has long imagined vast sails stretched across the void, capable of catching the solar wind. Replace sunlight with plasma, and suddenly the energy involved surges into realms beyond our current comprehension. A swarm of machines, tiny, countless, operating as one, could, in principle, absorb staggering amounts of energy, converting it into usable power. If a billion-ton blast of plasma is equivalent to a billion nuclear bombs, then the fraction harnessed by such a system would still represent centuries of power for a civilization like ours. And what would such power be for? One possibility lies in motion itself. To decelerate a massive vessel traveling between the stars would require energy on an incomprehensible scale. A comet 10 kilometers wide, or 20 kilometers, depending on 3i Atlas' true size, would carry a momentum so vast that ordinary propulsion could not possibly break it within the span of a solar system crossing. Unless, of course, breaking was never the plan. Perhaps the plan was to accelerate instead, to bend away from our observation before our probes could intercept to slip into the darkness faster than detection can follow. The harnessing of a solar storm could provide exactly that boost, a last flare of borrowed power to vanish into the galactic night. But a more troubling notion emerges if the storm was not coincidence. To trigger a coronal mass ejection would require interference at the star itself, an audacity that verges on the divine in its scale. Yet theory suggests it might be possible. Imagine a fleet of machines seeded into the corona, injecting instability, forcing magnetic ropes to snap in precisely chosen places. Imagine that eruption not aimed randomly but carefully toward an awaiting collector. The sun weaponized, tamed, and bent to another's purpose. If that is what we have just witnessed, then Three-Eye Atlas is not simply a relic of another system. It is a machine of staggering power, executing maneuvers with a precision that humanity can only marvel at. The coincidence of timing, the odds of one of the rarest objects ever observed being struck by one of the rarest events in astronomy, becomes less a coincidence and more a demonstration. A test run, perhaps or a declaration subtle enough to be denied, bold enough to be undeniable. The implications spread like cracks through glass. If an intelligence can provoke our star into violence, could it not also aim such violence at us? Earth's magnetic field protects us from much of the sun's wrath, but not all. A sufficiently powerful coronal mass ejection, deliberately guided, could strip satellites from the sky, blind our defences, and cripple our world's energy grid in minutes. The Carrington event would seem like a spark compared to such a storm. The fragility of our civilization, our reliance on electronics, makes the thought chilling. Yet if the intent were hostile, why wait? Why reveal? The fact that Earth has not been targeted may be the only comfort, suggesting observation rather than aggression. Still, observation has its own weight. Three-Eye Atlas, unlike Oumuamua, has not cut a close path by Earth. 
Instead, its trajectory brushes the outer planets, lingering, sampling, drifting in ways that almost suggest reconnaissance. Jupiter's moons, rich with subsurface oceans. The habitable zone planets, Earth included, each a potential target of interest for anyone searching not for conquest, but for life. Could we perhaps be witnessing nothing more than curiosity? The gaze of something vast, regarding us with the same scientific hunger we cast upon the stars. The deeper mystery rests in the anti-tail. Unlike the light gases of a comet's normal trail, which are easily stripped and carried by solar winds, the anti-tail is composed of heavier particles, a structure that points not away from the sun, but seemingly toward it. In 3i Atlas, this feature has remained unnaturally stable. If the storm has failed to obliterate it, then we may be watching something artificial, a field of machines resisting even the sun's fury. Nanotechnology, still a dream in our own laboratories, could form swarms capable of this. Such machines, each microscopic yet countless, could harvest, build, and transmit energy. Together they would form a cloud 100,000 kilometers across, vast enough to be glimpsed across astronomical distances. That such a formation exists attached to an interstellar wanderer is perhaps the most telling anomaly of all. And so the revelations arrive, not with thunder, but with silence. Atlas endures. The anti-tail persists. No disintegration, no flare, no fracture. Instead, we are left with questions that shake the boundaries between science and imagination. Are we witnessing the first evidence of stellar engineering, a glimpse of how an older civilization might fuel its journeys? Have we mistaken a vessel for a comet, technology for ice? Or is this merely an extraordinary coincidence, a natural object surviving a storm against every expectation? The truth may not be revealed in our lifetimes, yet the thought lingers. If they can survive the sun, they can survive us. If they can command storms, then our entire planet rests within reach of powers we barely comprehend. And if they choose only to observe, perhaps we should count ourselves fortunate. For in the silence of Atlas, in its refusal to behave as nature dictates, lies a message that needs no words. Perhaps the greatest mystery is not whether Atlas is a machine, but whether we are prepared to accept what that would mean. For once we admit that possibility, we are no longer alone in the dark. We are not the first to reach for the stars. We are only the latest to look up, wondering if someone else has already mastered the fires of the sun itself. And so, as the data continues to stream in, as telescopes across the world keep their watch, the world waits. Not for an explosion, not for a flare, but for the next clue in a puzzle that has already outgrown our understanding. Atlas sails on, luminous, silent, and stubbornly intact, carrying with it the answer to a question older than civilization itself. If this is not the end, then it may be the beginning. If you found this story as unsettling, fascinating, and mysterious as we did, then stay with us. Like, share, and subscribe, and tap that hype icon so more people can join in unraveling the enigma of Three Eye Atlas. Because what comes next may redefine everything we thought we knew, not just about comets or storms, but about our place in the universe.